Hey, welcome back to the channel. It's awesome that you're tuning in. So in this video, I was thinking maybe it's fun to do a quick comparison with the old version and the new. The Red Rock Pocket, number one against number two. What are we going to get? What are the differences? And which one is the best one for you? Because this is the main reason why I'm making these videos. I want to make battles. I want to show what the differences are. And just to help you out with the choice, which one will fit your need. All right, consider subscribing, hit the little bell, and let's go. Yeah. All right, so let's take a close look at the Retroid Pocket number one. So there's one thing you need to know. If you're looking it up on AliExpress, you will see there are quite some different versions out there. This is the Pandora Games Mini, as you can see over here, but the Retroid Pocket number one has also a dual boot feature like the Retroid Pocket number two. But we're going to talk about it a little bit later in this video. But keep in mind also that we're having two versions with the D-pad. They still have this clickish D-pad, but the form factor is quite pleasant. It's completely different and this works very well. Okay, so with this version we're going to get a very nice IPS display. We're having a six button layout and I think that was the biggest complaint with this handheld. The form factor, I did like it. It, is, it feels quite sturdy. It, yeah, I must say the shape itself is more like the personal taste. I do like it. Some people hated it. But if you're looking at, let's say the layout, it was not perfect. Six button layout is not good and I hated that they put a D-pad here in the left top corner because I really do have it over here because I play most of the time with the D-pad. Alright, so let's talk about the Retroid Pocket 2 and this was one big gigantic improvement and I can understand why the people were hyped about this product. Simply because when you're looking at it, it's a completely revision of the old model. We're having two analog stick. The analog stick is just perfect when you're holding it like this. It doesn't, let's say, stick in your thumb, so it works very well. Still we're having the clicky D-pad. The D-pad itself it's very cliquish and I don't like it at all. I was not a big fan of it and that's my personal opinion. So having an analog stick, two of them, you don't use them very often, but when you use it, it's very convenient. We're having all the buttons, including shoulder buttons, because with this version, we didn't have those. And that are all the minor improvements. We're having two speakers now, with this version only having one. The audio itself is great. And with the dual boot, this is something that is just great. And it is a big improvement over this one. Alright, so what you can see over here, both systems are running on the Retroid Pocket or the Pandora's Box version. So what I did notice, beside the form factor buttons and how comfortable they are, and battery life, etc, etc, we just wanted to focus in this part on the menu and what are we going to get. And I can tell you, it's exactly the same when it comes to the gameplay, but also the support itself. Alright, so with the Retroid Pocket 1 and 2, we have a possibility to run Sega Dreamcast, but it will be flawed in many ways. With FPS dips, maybe some minor glitches, but in my opinion, it's still playable. So that's pretty awesome in my opinion. And even with the second button layout, we have more than enough. Then, play some fighting games. Alright, so... Let's play the same game on the Retro Pocket 2. The sound is way better. But as you can see, it still has some glitches on the back. And it has the same problems like the previous model. So my, what is this Retro Pocket 2 and the number one capable of? So as you've already seen with the Dreamcast, it runs. The same goes for the PSP games. Some of the games are running, let's say, decent enough to enjoy. But I think if you want to play some retro old school stuff, two-dimensional, that is just the way how to go to with these Retro Pocket systems. Okay, so let's talk about the menu. So when you're holding the home button, here we can go back to the main menu. And only with the Retroid Pocket versions, you will have the switch system, where you can basically go back to the Android version, where you can just be free. You let it go, let it free. You know what I'm going to be. I'm going to get into the Retroid Pocket Go. Woo. 
But okay, there's something I just wanted to show you. So if you're having the Pandora Games Mini that I've shown you in the beginning of this video, yeah, you don't have this option. So when you're pressing the home button and you go back to the main menu or the setting menu, you can see we don't have the options to switch. And that is the difference with the Pandora Games Mini and the version from Retroid. Is it a very big problem? Depends what you want to do with it. Because this version doesn't have the Android version, so you can go into the menu and go be doing some messing around and that is something you need to take consideration and yeah it can be a bummer if you're searching for it okay so a quick chit chat regarding the menu so basically we don't have a touch screen so that is isn't barbum so with the android version yeah it's fun that you're having an android version but we don't have a touch screen so we can't play all of the android games some of the games like minecraft i did manage to get it working on this version but you need to have quite some knowledge if it comes to emulators, how to set it up. And for most people just want to grab yourself, let's say, a system like this version that you can just plug and play and just enjoy some games. This thing will give you some more freedom, but you need to have the knowledge to mess around with it. All right, so this is what you're going to get with the Retroid Pocket number one and the number two. Oh, crap. But what you're going to get basically is the same result when it comes to the emulation. And I must say, when you're looking at the devices, both of them are running very well if it comes to the low end stuff. The three dimensional stuff like Dreamcast, yeah, let's say the PSP is not perfect for these systems. I think the biggest change that it made is the shell itself. It's a big improvement. I completely understand why is this hype about Retro Pocket 2. It's a very decent handheld. And let's put it this way if this thing was super cheap, like 30 bucks. Yeah, then what say and you're just searching for a cheap way to play some games, this can be a very good option. But the price between those, let's say, awesome systems is so minor that I'm thinking if you want to spend some cash and you want to get some thing, I think the obvious choice will be Retro Pocket 2. Yeah, nevertheless, let me know in the comments what do you think of this, what do you think of the comparison, and what is your favorite version. What I thank you for watching, consider subscribing, hit the little bell, and I will see you in the next video. Oh.